Hey guys, Nate here from Urban Leaf, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to set up an indoor grow light for happy and healthy plants through the winter. Uh, we're gonna be going through the three basic components that you need in order to set up a grow light for less than 40 bucks. It's actually really, really easy to give your indoor plants enough light if you know what you're doing. So there's basically three main components that you're gonna need. Uh, the first one is a plant specific bulb. I've got a couple of examples here. You're also going to need some sort of lamp or you know, something to hold the globe in place. Again, a couple of examples here. And finally, you're probably gonna want a timer, uh, which basically turns the light on and off at regular times each day. So let's get into each of these components in a little bit more detail. Firstly, the light. The most important thing to be aware of here is that the regular light globes we use for illuminating our homes generally do not provide the right sort of light for plants. As you may recall from high school, visible light is actually made up of a whole bunch of different frequencies. The red and blue frequencies are most important ones for plants, although other frequencies can play an important role. The setup we'll be using has what's known as an E26 socket or connection. Anyway, the globe is the first and arguably most important part of this setup. And you'll find these online ranging for between six and about $25 each. So the next thing you're gonna need is a lamp. And these things perform two important functions. First, and perhaps most obviously, uh, they hold the light globe in place. Uh, we really like this uh, sort of desk lamp style arrangement uh, basically because it is uh, very adjustable. You can move it up and down as the plant grows. And the reason that is important is that with these grow lights, they've actually only got a very, very shallow, um, effective depth of light. And what I mean by that is that there's a relatively short distance over which you need to have uh, the globe placed. We do have a separate video coming out, which is all about the optimal placement of globes. Um, but for now, let's just remember that it's kind of handy to be able to adjust this thing. There are, of course, other styles like this one here. It's got kind of a, a clip-on clamp at the bottom. Uh, that could be handy. Maybe you could clip that to a cupboard or a door or maybe even your windowsill, depending on uh, what type of window frame you have. But that's the first function, is that it uh, is gonna basically give you a way of holding the globe and kind of moving it around. The other thing that these uh, lampshades do is control the direction in which the light actually gets thrown. Um, basically, this is gonna be really, really important if you have this light set up in a room or part of the house in which you actually live or spend a lot of time. Because let me tell you, if you th have this thing shining in your living room all day, it is gonna grow old real, real fast. But if we instead, let me show you what I mean here, if we instead have a housing on that, then it's a little bit less offensive. So look, as well as making these lights a lot more uh, easy to live with, the other thing that you're doing with a lampshade is actually helping channel the light in the direction that it's needed. In other words, in other words towards the plant. Um, some of the lights that are available for plants, including uh, the one that we sell, actually come with built-in optics. So what you'll see is there's actually like a little lens up the front there. And what those optics do is help send the light in a very, very specific direction, in this case, towards the plant. Um, truthfully, if you have a globe like that, then you don't really need this shade for directing the light. But if you have a non-directional globe like this CFL one, which basically, as you saw, was like throwing light out in all different directions, then you know this ability to kind of channel the light in a certain direction towards a plan is really, really important. Let me show you what I mean. So I've set up this CFL globe to be about, hmm, it's about six inches away from my palm meter, which I've got sitting on the table here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is turn this light on and I'm going to show you the par value. So it's reading, I need to get the cable out of the way. So it's reading about 43, 44, uh, moving around a little bit, but it's kind of in the mid 40s is, is where we're at with this light globe. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to keep the light at exactly the same location and the only change is I'm going to screw on this lampshade. 
And this has obviously got a shiny metallic sort of surface on the inside. Uh, I've kept the par meter in exactly the same spot and the globe is also at exactly the same height or distance away from your, your plants. Um, we'll turn it back on and turn on the par meter again. And look at what's happened to the reading. It's now 220, 230. So basically a five fold increase in the intensity of the light that is being picked up on this par meter with exactly the same globe and exactly the same distance. We can also try a slightly different lamp fitting as well. I've got another one over here. Um, now this is obviously a fairly uh, narrow lamp, so what it does is send the, the light in a fairly narrow kind of direction. But we've got this one as well, which is a um, similar sort of concept, but a fair bit wider. So let's see what this does to the intensity of our light from the CFL. Again, same globe going back in. And just for reference sake, like the 40 or 50 that I had originally, that's pretty much useless as far as uh, plants are concerned. Uh, you're not really gonna see any noticeable impact on plant growth uh, if your par value is that low. Even in the two or 300 type range, it's still pretty low. It's probably okay for some indoor house plants, but certainly not enough for uh, edible plants like what we offer. Anyway, I'm gonna turn this on now with the bigger lampshade and what you'll see here is we've got a par value 220 type range again. Uh, I actually thought it might have been a little bit lower. Um, but anyway, it, has, it does a similar effect. What you are gonna find is that uh, the drop-off that we encounter with this lampshade at further distances away is basically gonna be a lot more significant. Think about it like you're putting honey on a bit of bread. You could either, you've got the same amount of honey coming out of the light globe, uh, you could either have that in one thick dollop right in the middle of your piece of toast, or you could spread it out thinly. The total quantity of the honey doesn't change, all we're doing is changing the way that it's distributed on the toast slash plant leaves, if you get what I'm saying. Okay, so you've got your globe, you've got your lamp to house it in. Uh, the third thing you might wanna consider is getting a timer. Now these are totally optional, um, and if you're a very vigilant and you're good at vigilant sort of person and you're good at remembering, uh, then you probably don't need this. And you can just jump up and turn your switch on and off every day uh, to turn your light on and off. If, however, you're a little bit more like me <laughs> and, and you're not known for your memory, then um, getting a timer is probably a worthwhile investment. And there's two basic types of timers that I wanted to show you guys. Uh, the first is a mechanical timer. And these things basically have a clock dial. And by moving the pins up and down, you can control when it turns on and off each day. The slightly fancier version of this comes with a digital display and allows you to have it turn on and off at different times each day. In my opinion, that's probably overkill, but if, for example, you wanted your timer to come on a bit later in the morning on, say, Saturdays and Sundays, then this might be a good option for you. The other really interesting option is getting a smart timer. If you buy them in bulk, they're not that much more expensive than a simple mechanical timer. Plus, they have the benefit of being controlled uh, via an app on your smartphone, and if you've got one, you can even connect it to your, your Alexa. Hey Alexa, can you turn the plant light off? Oh wait, we're not that fancy around here. Hey Rob, can you turn the plant light off? Okay. <laughs> there you are. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, so there you have it guys. Hopefully this uh, intro to grow lights and how to set them up has been useful for you. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Uh, I'm going to include links in the description to all of the products that we've talked about here. And if you'd like to learn more about indoor gardening and growing your own food, uh, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel, we've got plenty more coming, and I'll catch you guys again soon. Thanks, bye.